Imagine the situation. You're at a meetup. Meetup? Whoa. <laughs> it's the pandemic, David. No one's at a meetup. Oh, right. So you're on Twitter. You see this tweet thread that says, OMG, CSS Grid is such a game changer. Look at these fantastic layouts. A thread. As you scroll through the thread, you're like, okay, play it cool. You don't know CSS Grid yet. How are you supposed to know CSS Grid? It just came out. It's been around for a couple of years. It's totally new. I've spent a lot of time struggling with CSS Grid. So on today's solo episode, hey, I'm here. Well, let's get real, you're me. I'm gonna show you a grid trick that will help you understand grid, give you more creative space in your layouts, or at least make you look like you know what you're doing. One of the most common layouts on the web is just centering things. The tried and true way of achieving this is by setting a explicit width on the containing element and applying auto margin to the left and right sides. And why does this work? Yeah, why does this work, David? Uh, so the auto value is hungry. You know, like, uh, it's gonna fill up as much space as it can. So setting auto margins on the left and the right side will take up an even amount of space and therefore centering the element. It's kind of like a nice and cozy way to tuck an element in with some margin. B plus. Now this layout comes with a trade-off. Let's say you have a full bleed photo or you wanna have a big snazzy quote. Well, breaking out of this centered container your options are a bit unsavory. You can close out of the container and place the full bleed content and then open up another container. But with some CMS systems, you might not have this level of control. Or you can use negative margins. Don't use negative margins. So you probably shouldn't use negative margins, but a more flexible solution can be achieved with CSS Grid. I didn't come up with this CSS grid trick or any grid trick or any CSS trick ever for that matter. The credit to this solution goes to Josh Komu, who has a fantastic blog post on this topic. And, and Josh also has this uh, CSS for JS developers course, amazing. Oh, and Josh also has this other blog post about margin collapse. Is this a Josh Komu fan blog? Could be, really could be. So how do we break out of the centered container? So the auto margin on the left and the right sides does center the elements, but it makes that space difficult to control. What we've really done here with this layout is we've created three columns. Anytime you hear the term columns, CSS Grid is probably the right tool here. We'll start by setting the container to display grid. Then to define these columns, we'll use the property grid template columns. This property sets the amount of columns in the grid and their width. In this case, we're defining three columns. The left and the right columns are one FR in width, which means they can fill up one fraction of the available space. And the middle column is 64 characters in width. Characters? Really? Characters are a natural sizing unit here because the content is in text form. Oh. This is really similar to the auto margin trick, but since we're using grid, we have control over each column. We can even get a little fancy with CSS grid. To the left and right of each column is an invisible line called a track. By default, they are identified with chronological numbers, but you can give each track a custom name. Then to set the content in the middle, we can create a rule that will place any element in the middle column by default. We can get even fancier. The grid column property is shorthand for both grid column start and grid column end. Oh yes, it gets even fancier. CSS Grid understands the dash start and dash end naming convention for track lines. We can reduce this code all the way down to just specifying the middle column. I thought you said you were bad at CSS. Oh, this knowledge comes from a lot of pain. But there is a problem. In the auto margin technique, we could set a max width for the container, which means it would size down as the screen got smaller. Using this grid technique, we're just specifying a fixed 64 characters in size for the middle column. So how do we fix this? 
with JavaScript. The min function. The min function. The CSS min function allows you to specify that an element will be whatever is the smaller of two values. So if you declare min 800 pixels 100%, the element will stay 800 pixels until 100% becomes less than 800 pixels. This means to get the middle content column to resize, we need to change it to min 64 characters 100%. So now we have the exact same behavior as we did before with the margin auto solution. But with the setup, we now have more control over the left and right columns. If we want the image to stretch across the entire screen, we can do that with a nifty little class. This tells the child to go from track line one to the very last track line. The very last line is represented by negative one. And if we want to be fancy again and name things, we can do that too. We can specify a whole container name for the first track line and then go to the last track line to end that container name. In the full width class, the grid column is just the entire container. And I like to think that's actually pretty readable. And just like that, we have an entire flexible CSS grid. Now, CSS grid is so much more than what we covered today. And if you wanna learn more CSS grid, then I can't recommend enough going through Grid Critters, which is a course from Mastery Games done by David Geddes. It is just so phenomenal and it teaches you the basics of grid while you're playing a game. And I promise you, this is not a sponsored thing. I paid for this with my own money and I went through it several times. I just love it. And I really think that if you wanna learn grid, it's one of the best resources out there. So I really recommend checking it out.